Hey, what's up you guys? Swan here from Swan Thinks. And today, let's do a deep dive into the robo-advisor Stashaway, where I'll be taking a detailed look at its investment strategy and do a complete overview of its long-term performance over the past three years, comparing it to what I think is the gold standard of long-term investing, the S&P 500. Now, some of you might say that this is an apple to oranges comparison. But to me, this comparison still makes sense because when you are deciding where to invest your money, both are valid options. So you'll want to know which one gives you the best chance of long-term success. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start with the basics. Stashaway is a robo-advisor. The term robo-advisor simply means that Stashaway has programmed a set of rules to help you determine which combinations of ETFs you should invest in based on your risk profile. Now the term risk here refers to volatility, which is how much your portfolio is expected to fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis. Now if you can stomach volatility, you can choose their higher risk portfolios which is heavier on stocks. If not, you could go for their lower risk, lower volatility portfolios which are heavier on assets like gold and bonds. What you can't control is what goes into these portfolios, because the selection is decided by Stashaway's algorithm. On the upside, all investment decisions are based on data and logic, with minimal interference by pesky human emotions. However, this also means that the performance of robo-advisors is only as good as the investment strategy that powers these algorithms. For Stashaway, this investment strategy is called ERA. ERA, or Economic Regime-Based Asset Allocation, is a systematic investment strategy backed by extensive academic research. Behind its overly fancy name is an investment strategy that is pretty easy to understand. First of all, ERA does not focus on stock picking, but instead focuses on constructing a well-balanced portfolio by mixing and matching different asset classes. The reason why it ignores individual stock picking and invests in ETFs instead is because statistics show that 80 to 96% of a portfolio's return is determined by asset allocation, and there is very little evidence that individual stock picking gives any advantage on returns over the long run. So you might as well focus your efforts on where it matters most, asset allocation. There are over 60 different ETFs under Stashaway's investment radar. Covering all sorts of asset classes from stocks and bonds to real estate to precious metals. These ETFs are selected based on their liquidity, long-term performance track record, and their ability to perform well under different economic environments. So how does ERA decide on an ideal asset allocation? Well, first of all, different asset classes will behave differently in different economic environments. The two major factors affecting asset performance are economic growth and inflation. Economic growth is pretty straightforward. In good times, people have more disposable income to spend and companies will likely make more profits. This is why stocks and real estate tends to do better. However, in low growth environments, companies are expected to underperform. And so investors will tend to switch to defensive investments to look for better returns. And so gold, bonds, and defensive stocks tend to do better. Next, we have inflation. High inflation lowers the value of money, which can eat into your investment profits. For example, if you made 8% on your stock investments, but the inflation rate is 3%, then your real return is actually only 5%. And so in high inflation scenarios, the risk-reward ratio for stock investments become far less attractive. And investors will tend to favor low-risk investments like bonds or gold, which can provide inflation protection. The interplay between economic growth and inflation is categorized by ERA into four different economic regimes, which is just a fancy way of saying there are four different situations. Now, while we can make an educated guess on which assets will do well in each situation, ERA takes this one step further by backtesting ETFs to see which has done well in different regimes in the past. This strategy of backtesting will allow ERA to identify the ideal portfolio for each situation. ERA will then process live economic data to determine which economic regime we are in and assign us the ideal portfolio suited for that regime. If ERA detects that we are moving towards a different economic regime, it will trigger a portfolio re-optimization. 
If error is unable to identify exactly which regime we are operating in, it switches us to an all-weather portfolio which is expected to do relatively well under any circumstances. To further reduce risk and capture opportunities, ERA also employs a risk shield and valuation gap. The risk shield function aims to detect abnormal market behavior by detecting a technical pattern called a death cross. Death crosses commonly appear on price charts right before a huge market sell-off. And so if ERA detects two or more death crosses in the market, it overrides any decision it made previously and triggers a portfolio reoptimization into a protective portfolio, just in case of a price crash. The valuation gap on the other hand aims to identify undervalued ETFs in the medium term via mean reversion. To put it simply, if ETF metrics fall well below its long-term average, it would signal that it is attractive or cheap relative to its potential future value. And so in such a situation, ERA may increase weightage to this particular ETF to capture the opportunity to buy low. And that pretty much sums up Stash Away's investment strategy, ERA. All these strategies are not aimed to give you the highest amount of return in the shortest amount of time, but to give you a better risk-adjusted return. Simply put, they are trying to reduce your downside while maintaining your upside for long-term wealth generation and preservation. ERA believes that passive strategies like dollar cost averaging into the S&P is non-ideal and it aims to improve the overall performance in areas where the S&P may underperform, essentially smoothing out the bumpy ride while maintaining good performance. Now all this sounds pretty smart and sophisticated, and on paper, it should be able to give us some good returns. However, let's put this to the test and see just how well this investment strategy has fared against the S&P in the past three years. For those of you who are not aware, the S&P is often touted as the gold standard of long-term investing. As well over 95% of professional fund managers in the US fail to beat the S&P returns after fees over the long term. In the following example, I will only be comparing Stashaway's 36% risk index to the S&P because lower risk indexes are less likely to match the performance. To make a fair comparison, let's assume that you dollar cost average 500 ringgit a month into both options starting August 2018, which is when the 36% risk index was introduced. Dollar cost averaging is a better comparison because it eliminates any market timing associated with lump sum investing which may skew the results one way or another. I have also taken into account that Stashaway has re-optimized its portfolios three times. So here are the results. If you had dollar cost average 500 ringgit a month into both options for the past three years, the S&P 500 would have outperformed Stashaway as of today. Notice how in the first two Stashaway portfolios, the performance is pretty much neck and neck with the S&P. In fact, Stashaway actually slightly outperforms the S&P in the first portfolio. For the second portfolio, the S&P 500 came out slightly ahead, with a slightly higher return and surprisingly, a lower max drawdown when the pandemic hit, with Stashaway losing a maximum of 21.1% while the S&P lost only 19.4% at the peak of the pandemic. For the third portfolio, Stashaway outperforms the S&P by a noticeable amount throughout the second half of 2020. But this overperformance starts breaking down early 2021. Stashaway lost its lead over the S&P as returns were severely impacted by the poor performance of KWEB and gold ETFs. And so as of today, the S&P remains the overall better performer in the past three years. So does this mean it's pointless to invest in Stashaway? After all, even with its sophisticated investment algorithm, the highest risk index did not match the performance of the S&P 500 in the past three years. As much as I like to root for its systematic investment approach, the proof is in the pudding, and at this point, ERA looks like it could use some tweaking. Granted, the algorithm could not have possibly predicted China's harsh crackdown on its own tech giants. So this might be a one-time blip that can be used as an opportunity to improve its algorithms. As for my own opinion, which should not be taken as investment advice, I am still optimistic that Stashaway stands a good chance to beat the S&P in the future.
The investment framework they use is in theory very robust. After all, an annualized return of over 17% in the past 3 years is not something to laugh at. If anything, this comparison just increases my conviction that the S&P 500 is the gold standard for long-term investing, beating out professional fund managers and robo-advisors alike. It is dangerous to assume that the S&P will stay on top forever, and so Stash Away's best days may be yet to come. As for its latest portfolio reoptimization, you can try to analyze these ETFs individually, but it all comes down to one thing. Do you agree with Stashaway's investing framework? Remember, this latest ETF combination was selected by ERA because it is likely to do well in current economic conditions of inflationary growth, based on economic history and data. If you don't agree with the framework, you won't find any value in this selection. And that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoy deep dives like these, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more nerdy content. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!